Chiefs have been the Chiefs over the first two months of the season. I mean, to me, you know, we're talking about degrees here. Are they in trouble? Well, you know, is it possible that they could wind up um, not going to the AFC Championship game for the first time in, 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 in eight years? I think that's on the table. I think they probably make it, but they've got a lot to figure out right now. And what I've always found is when the Patriots are in trouble, it, it's when you look at them and you're, and you're saying, well, Belichick will figure it out on defense and Tom Brady will make it work on offense. And right now, that sort of feels like we are, that, that, that's where we are. I don't think anybody would have guessed in September we'd Peter be at this King point of the left. season saying the Patriots really need Josh Gordon, but they need Josh Gordon. Yep. They're reliant on Josh Gordon, the guy that they picked up in September. Huge part of that, of course, is Gronk's health. There's no guarantee that he's going to be back anywhere close to 100% by the end of the year. He's battling a number of different things. Julian Edelman, same deal. He's been a little bit nicked up. And so they lack an identity on offense, something they can hang their hat on. Certainly it's going to be a priority for them to develop that. I think that's one piece of it they're going to have to figure out. And the other piece of it, I mean, look, and I've said this for two years, they've invested a lot in their secondary. For their defense to be even good based on what they have in the front seven, the secondary needs to be excellent. Before the Titans game, the secondary was excellent. The secondary regressed in that Titans game. Stephon Gilmore didn't play well, and things slowed downhill from there. And so I think that's really the two things that you're looking at going forward. they got to take care of between now and Christmas. Develop an identity on offense, whether it's part of that's getting Gronk back healthier, whether that's getting Edelman back healthier, or reworking everything. And then on defense, I think it's getting the secondary backwards playing as well as it had before that Tennessee game. Philadelphia loses off a bye at home. I still think Carson Wentz is a remarkable talent, and I love their defensive line. But they're pretty average on the perimeter. No real pop running back. Secondary is a mess. You talk to your sources around the league. How surprised are you? Philadelphia's sub-500. They go on the road now to New Orleans. They're kind of a mess, right? Like, this thing yeah. is unraveling a little bit. Well, again, I would look where their investment is. And when you talk to people about where the Eagles are at right now, so much of their identity over the last you know, year has been built through that offensive line. And they've invested big time in their offensive tackles. And to this point, Jason Peters hasn't pay- played up to his accustomed level at left tackle coming back off the injury last year. He's been nicked up and playing through pain. They haven't got production at that spot. And Lane Johnson, before he got hurt, was underachieving at right tackle. And so they've been reliant. That team has been built around its offensive line and in particular its tackle play. They've really invested in those spots. They haven't played well in those two spots. And when you've got a quarterback coming back off an ACL like Carson Wentz is, those problems can compound. And so I think you start there. And then defensively, certainly you mentioned it. The problem at the corner position was already there. Oh, they, need young guys like, they need young guys like Sidney Jones to play better. There's no question about it. Jones has had some health issues too, of course. And losing Ronald Darby, now there's a potential there that that problem gets a lot worse because you're taking your best player at the position out of the mix. And so there's just a lot they're working through. One thing that's keeping them alive, of course, is that the NFC East hasn't been very good, but the problems there are real. And the two spots where I think they need to get a lot better. and you know, forget the issue at receiver. Forget some of the issues they've had at linebacker. To me, the big, the, the, the big, the big thing going forward is to get right at that tackle, at those tackle spots, and get right at the corner spot. Albert, something we're having kind of a cultural change in the NFL, where these Shanahan's and these Matt Nagy's and these Sean McVay's, they're making even successful coaches on offense. Mike McCarthy look old. Dirk Cutter yeah. looks old. Jason Garrett looks old. Hugh Jackson's been fired. Forget the defensive coaches. We got a revolution going on here. The rules are built for these young yep. guys. And let me let let's I, I feel bad for Todd Bowles, but I look at Sam Darnold and I'm like, I'm yep. sorry. I gotta get an offense. I like Todd Bowles. I gotta get an yep. offensive coach, right? Like the Jets, they they've got and a part yeah. It's a factor, Colin. I mean, like uh, I can tell you owners right now are pointing to Sean McVay and pointing to Andy Reid's offense in Kansas City and saying Give me that. Like, how do I get that right there? And, and two things really stick out. If you want to talk about the way things are being done a little bit differently. First, what these coaches are willing to do, and Sean McVay said it to me repeatedly when he talks about his philosophy, the quarterback's job is the most difficult job in sports. So my job is to make it as easy as I possibly can for him. So these coaches have found a way to take some of the mental load off the quarterback and put it on the coaching staff, whether it's through formation and whether it's through motion all the different things that they do to make the job quarterback's job easier. And we see it with Kyle Shanahan, the way he was able to get Jimmy Garoppolo ready to play. We've seen it with, with Sean McVay, the way he's got Jared Goff to play at a certain level. 
They're making things easier on the quarterbacks. They're getting the quarterbacks playing faster. So that's one piece of it. The second piece of it is how open-minded these guys are. I remember sitting with Matt Nagy over the summer. Yeah. And he told me that when he goes into the draft, he has two pads of paper, okay? On one pad of paper, he's taking notes on the players that he's looking at, right? Scouting, I like this guy, I like that guy. On the second pad, he's writing down plays. I like this play, I like that play. 20 years ago, a lot of NFL coaches looked at the college game and said, that's college stuff, that's rinky-dink, that's gimmicky, we're not going to do that. Now, NFL coaches are stealing things from the college game. They're stealing things from the high school game. And so I think the ability to get quarterbacks playing fast and taking the mental load off the quarterbacks is one element that you're seeing from these coaches. And then a willingness to be open-minded and steal things from lower levels of football, that's creeped into it too. I don't know who the next guy, as far as, far as this sort of developing – friend in, in pro football. I don't know who the next guy's going to be. I will tell you that I think that there are going to be owners that are going to look at it and say, okay, well, maybe we'll look at a Josh McDaniels. Maybe we'll look at a John Filippo. but we're also going to look at the college ranks now. And we're going to be more open-minded about looking at the college ranks because a lot of the stuff that's coming to the NFL is, is from there. And that's where I think you'd see names like Lincoln Riley certainly come up when we get to January. Finally, uh, I have a sleeper team in the NFL. I'm I'm told it's your sleeper team. I think the <laughs> AFC playoffs are all figured out except one spot. I think the Patriots win their division, the Steelers win theirs, the Chiefs win theirs, uh, the Texans win theirs. I think the Chargers are in as an AFC wild card. The only thing left, and I think it's going to come from the AFC South, it's going to be the Titans or the Colts. I, I, the Colts are my dark horse team. I'm told they're yours as well. Why? I love the Colts right now. First of it, two pieces to it. First of it, first part is Andrew Locke, who, if you haven't noticed, is playing fantastic football. The last three weeks, he's completed over 70% of his passes. I talked to Frank Reich about this on Sunday night. I said, are you guys at the point where you think that Andrew Locke is back to being Andrew Locke? He's like, the waiting is over. We're here. So they've got Andrew Locke back at, in a spot where he, they, they feel like he could be a top-five quarterback over the last two months of the season, and that's obviously significant. The other piece, they're drafting better, Colin. Yes. That offensive line is fixed. Like, they haven't allowed a sack since October 4th. That's bananas. They have two games in that stretch where they've rushed for over 200 yards. They have four top 40 picks starting on their offensive line, two of them from this year's draft class, Quentin Nelson and Braden Smith. And, oh, by the way, on the other side of the ball, they probably have the rookie of the year in Darius Leonard, a middle linebacker. On top of that, a couple of running backs, Jordan Wilkins, Naheem Hines, Deion Kane, the receiver from Clemson, had been the star of training camp. He's hurt. They'll see him next year. There's depth in the, in, in, in the, in, in the draft class. There's elite players in the draft class. I think we're going to look at this team in December and say, if this team makes it into the playoffs, they could be a threat to advance. Yep. And going into 2019, based on the job that Chris Ballard has done as a general manager and where Andrew Luck is as a quarterback, I think we're looking at a team that's going to be a force to be reckoned with over the next few years, not just in their division, but in the AFC in general. Albert Breer, uh, main content guy, Monday morning quarterback. Albert, appreciate it, man. Thanks. You got it, Colin. I couldn't agree more on Indianapolis. Again, you know, RG3 came out and won Rookie of the Year and was flashy and fun, and Andrew Luck was boring. Can we stop living in the moment? What do you inherit? Darnold's got nothing in New York. Baker's got real players. Josh Allen in Buffalo's got nothing. Josh Rosen in Arizona's got nothing to work with. I'm telling you, Andrew Luck came into this league with garbage. He finally has an offensive line, and he is tearing it up. I mean, I got to tell you something. When I think about who I was watching Sunday, the first team I picked was the Indianapolis Colts. Generally, I want to see the Steelers. I want to see Pittsburgh. It used to be Aaron Rodgers. It's New England. This week, first.